YouTube, they trying to pay y'all, man. Oh yeah, YouTube, YouTube trying to keep their word. They, they coming up off the money way better than any other platform. It, it's been like that, not just artists, but any creators. Period. Yeah. So, uh, it's a couple topics that that definitely need to be spread. You know, we need to spread the word when it comes to YouTube because hopefully we can influence everybody else and make them and force them, give them some peer pressure to the other platforms to start paying artists like YouTube is. Hold up, the article's not popping up. Let's see. There we go. YouTube music, YouTube music and premium surpass 80 million paid subscribers. Now, these stats are crazy. I'm just going to read a little bit of the, the article uh, top line. YouTube has surpassed the milestone of 80 million paid YouTube music and premium subscribers worldwide. The subscribers figure, which YouTube says includes trialist marks uh, marks of 30 million. That part I got to figure out. Increase on the last subscriber figure to publicly be announced for YouTube music, which was 50 million. Okay, so it's grown 30 million in the last 13 months. YouTube's latest subscriber tally means that the platform has added around 2.3 million subscribers every month since September 2021. Oh, damn. All right, this is where it gets, <laughs> this is where it gets important. Elsewhere in the streaming market, rival Spotify added 7 million net premium subscribers to its user base in Q3 of 2022, taking its total global paying subs audience to 195 million, right? The growth is it's been pretty slow for Spotify um, compared to the beginning, but it's, you know, they're already big. That's expected. Apple Music, meanwhile, announced that it surpassed 60 million subscribers in June 2019, but hasn't confirmed the updated sub numbers since then. Hmm. All right. That's three years ago. But at the very least, we could say YouTube Music has more subscribers than Apple Music did when it last reported. Yeah, which Every, is interesting. I would assume they're probably not too far behind what Apple is now. Yeah, yeah. I would Apple, say that Apple don't really seem to care too much about Apple Music, bro. It's not it's not a focused product <laughs> the same way YouTube nah. music is for them, or Spotify is for well, you know, for Spotify. You right. Know what I'm so I, I would assume they're probably if I had to guess, they're probably somewhere between like ninety and maybe one twenty. I would think it doesn't seem like there's any vision there. You know what I'm saying? Apple Music, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, bro, it, it, at that point, it's just a, a lead magnet. That's what I think of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think of. When I think yeah. of Apple Music. Hey, come listen to some yeah. music, so we can sell you on all this other shit. <laughs> yeah, I definitely uh, agree with that. My thing is with Apple Music, no, well, YouTube Music. The numbers are ridiculous when we think about worldwide. Let me see. YouTube. Well, I'll just say this outright. Like, uh, you know, Spotify isn't in every single country. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember when I was doing research, we had a client, I think that was China or Korea. So I had to do some research around things over there. And YouTube was the highest listening platform. So YouTube music. was almost everywhere. Period. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, period. And I was like, dang. And it was, I mean, it was one, it was number one. It was ridiculous. Two, what number two was like some other streaming platform I had never heard of. Number three was another streaming platform I had never heard of. Spotify wasn't even available. And in some of these other countries, Spotify might be available, but it's not even number one. And yeah. so crazy to realize how small Spotify actually is in context. Like there's so many different streaming platforms out yeah. there. Yeah. So, I mean, that alone gives YouTube an advantage that no one else has because your reach. So, all right, cool. Paid subscribers, that's what we're talking about here. But actually, usage, I, I think... It's probably ridiculous. Yeah, YouTube probably still has them in, in usage. I remember that stat being that way some years ago. Let's see. Um, what would be the question to Google on here? Total user activity on YouTube, something like that? Ah, let's try to go straight for <laughs> <laughs> Go straight for what platform... Gets the most music streaming. I just want to compare platforms. Let's see if, if we can get this out right. All right, so it says Spotify right now. It's the most popular streaming platform. That's the thing. YouTube isn't. A, yeah. All right. YouTube versus Spotify music streaming. Let's see if we can get a quick little answer. YouTube music offers greater. Oh, y'all trying to do YouTube music? Now nah, I need YouTube. 
All right, so we'll, we're going to do a, a update on that stat at some point. But with that being said, YouTube also is going to pay for shorts. Yep, that's coming. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. Right? Because TikTok still ain't paying. They're still not paying. As a matter of fact, I actually heard about this watching it, MKBA. What's the damn? MKBHD. It, okay, I actually was going to say it right. Yeah. MKBHD <laughs> and Andrew Schultz had a talk. Yeah, it was a, it was the weirdest pairing, bro. <laughs> he was on Flagrant. MKBHD was on Flagrant what? podcast. And they were talking about YouTube. I got to go back and finish it. But yeah, they were talking about um, the value of shorts and the things that it might ruin. So it a lot of it relates to artists as well. So one, just paying for shorts is going to be dope. Mm -hmm. TikTok, the other platforms hasn't really figured out how to pay. Meanwhile, I was talking to somebody else who was a uh, serious YouTuber and they were kind of like, I feel like YouTube's trying to figure out how to pay less, right? Year over year over year, how can I pay less money <laughs> for these creators? Because these other people are getting away without paying nobody, yeah. right? So YouTube can kind of get away with like cutting off at the top a little bit, right? Yeah. They went from not paying enough and then they finally hit this renaissance, paying people a lot. And now it's more like, all right, now how can we find some type of balance? Yeah, that's why they're moving so subscriber heavy too. Wasn't it like subscription heavy, right? Like mm. not even just them, I think, I think all the social media platforms are like, hey, these creators want to get paid. Let's put the burden of payment on the fans. Kind of yes. like like tipping a waitress at a restaurant, right? Yes. It's like, it's like yeah. yo, what's up to you if she if she eats? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because then we can we can say, hey, we give you monetization tools. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. So it's like, yo, we're not we're not gonna put the bag in your pocket. We'll right. give you the opportunity to to put a bag in your pocket. If, yeah. you, if you use it correctly, follow our tips, play the game, we want you to play all this stuff. That's that's why I see it moving, bro. I think the problem with that is for YouTube, like they have found a sweet spot where they truly have become like the substitute for TV in a different way. Mm -hmm than the other platforms have. We know people spend some of that TV time on the other social media platforms, but YouTube is like a legitimate like platform in, in yeah. relation to like traditional TV. Yeah, I watch YouTube way more than I watch TV shows, right. movies, all that. Right, yeah. so with that being said, that advertisement model is it, actually most parallel to that, right? Paying for advertisers. These other platforms came from more social media first. Yeah. YouTube wasn't social media. And social media wasn't even a big, big thing when social yeah. media, uh, when YouTube started popping. So I don't know how they're going to do that. But like paying for shorts is going to be so valuable. And they already segmented shorts. I don't know if y'all noticed when shorts came out. Like all them shorts would be mixed in with the actual videos. And then it's so hard to find relevant videos. It's like, I don't want to watch a short right now. And I got to go down 20 videos just to find an actual YouTube video to watch. Now they have that in a separate tab. You would have thought they would have did that from get go, but you know, they figured it out. They're moving in the right direction. So they're so serious about shorts. They have actually improved the consumption um, rate of it. They are planning on paying. I was on YouTube the other day. I've done this actually with reels and shorts at this point. When somehow, you know, sometimes you just be going back and forth on your phone and you might be off it for a second, you go back to it. Yeah. So I'll go back to my phone and I'll think I'm on TikTok and then I realize I'm actually on YouTube or I'm actually on, on start Reels. Trying, start trying to click a certain yeah, way and they won't like, do it. What the hell is going on? <laughs> and the YouTube Shorts one was so annoying because I, I had never really been on Shorts on my phone because I always keep the, I had the app deleted for a while because yeah. YouTube, I be watching YouTube. So I'm like, I'm going to delete this one. I can yeah. easily get myself off of TikTok and, and Instagram if I want to. But I redownload the app just to check on some stuff we were doing. And yeah, I ended up in the Shorts and I couldn't even figure out how to get out of it, bro, for a minute. It's very annoying. Like, that, that, <laughs> like the user experience is not the greatest. Yo. <laughs> like, they're literally going to bully their way through the, the short form content game off of paying out money and and everything that comes from it because the experience is not where it's at. TikTok is still destroying Reels and, hey. and YouTube when it comes to UX, but Man. everything else, everything else they're getting fucked up about. Hey, I, I believe it, bro. I, I believe <laughs> that they're going to strong arm their way in that game. Yeah. I, I think they are doing better than reels um, yeah 100 yeah even, even, reels. even this same article um like leo cohen kind of talks about how like their their mission is to become the highest paying platform to the music industry 
Ooh, I and, like that. And I mean, he talks about I think the numbers in there somewhere, but I think they've already paid like six billion dollars or something to the music industry. So it's like YouTube's biggest advantage. Oh, actually, before I even say what I'm about to say, he also talks about how like you know they're able to do this because they have this very unique model of advertising revenue and then subscription revenue. Um, subscription mm-hmm. revenue from like the YouTube music, YouTube live, and, and then ad revenue. I don't think, I think, I wonder if there's a style there about which platform gets the most ad revenue, but I would be willing to bet it's, it's YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. maybe Facebook is a close second. Facebook's ad revenue situation, you know, has taken a, a different type of toll, though. Yeah, because of the, the Apple thing. Yeah, the Apple yeah. thing. So I don't know. That might really be a problem. Yeah. So it's like YouTube's biggest advantage really is like yo we can afford to pay off more than these other platforms can so mm-hmm. you can say what you want to say about the user experience you can complain remember what year was that like 2019 2020 when all the youtubers were complaining oh, about the adpocalypse yeah the adpocalypse yeah. they were gonna boycott and shit nobody left but it's like where else you gonna go bro yeah. who, who else gonna pay you even close to what youtube <laughs> is paying you nice. and youtube knows that bro they don't know mm-hmm. they, they think it but like where you gonna go yep <laughs> Easy man. So I'll read that exact quote to what you uh what you said. Oh, yeah. Uh in September, when announcing the six billion dollar milestone, YouTube's global head of music, Lior Cohen, pinned the platform's growth on what he called its twin engine of ads and subscriptions. In a new blog post published on Wednesday, November 9th, to announce the new study, the new subscriber tally, Cohen reiterated that the platform's previously stated goal of becoming the number one contributor of revenue to the music industry. Dope. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere in the blog post, Cohen called the new subscriber numbers a monumental moment for music on YouTube and said that its twin engine of revenue, subscriptions, and ads is the real deal i'm so proud and humbled that we've reached over 80 million subscribers on youtube and premium bet so this is dope like to, the fact them stating that they have this goal i actually believe them great pr yeah it's great it's great <laughs> pr for, for one but i believe them and i believe them because of what he said like that twin engine mm-hmm. of those two things so it's one of those things that's like we're best positioned to actually do this and doing it is great PR. So why not? Like there's there's more benefit than just doing it from a revenue standpoint or or a corporate good standpoint. It's like, yeah. hey, this actually works well with our business model overall. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do it and make it known. It's like, oh yeah, we don't have gluten free in our product, but let's say it's gluten free because <laughs> hey, you get clout for it these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. And and they've done a good job of like distancing themselves from like the like streaming platform not paying enough conversation in the yes. music because it's like people it's like i don't know people forget that youtube music i feel like they forget it exists in the conversation of streaming platforms because mm. it's mainly integrated with just youtube right like i don't yeah. think of youtube music separately i think about youtube it's like youtube almost in my heart can do no wrong you know what i'm saying like it's, it's, it's youtube bro like who else who else fucking with them but like they don't even come up in that conversation when right. artists start talking about oh why isn't this platform paying more why you no know, these dsps bumping up the Per stream pay rate, it, nobody even thinks about YouTube, bro. So they're they're doing a great job of, I think, and like if they keep it the goal, bro, like five years or so, they're gonna be like the the music, the new like music industry like savior. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Especially once like, I think artists really start learning like how much money they could make on YouTube. Like they, you know, we we always told clients like, bro, like the best way to work your YouTube is work your YouTube like a YouTuber, like post just as consistently. You know, we had a conversation about um about DDG that one time about how he was able to build up doing it and it's like bro I feel like if most artists saw how much money you could possibly make as a YouTuber it would completely flip the game bro YouTube (laughs) YouTube money is so different man we can't stress it enough to you and I know it's hard when you haven't gotten there yet but there's a reason why these creators on YouTube are a little slower to like get so hype about these other platforms, mm-hmm. right? It's like, oh yeah, this TikTok thing has come out cool and I got a million subscribers on YouTube and all that type of stuff. So I could probably even afford to have a TikTok team and focus on that. Mm-hmm. But one, is it going to be around? And two, I don't want to risk making less money on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And even when they do embrace it, they use it to push people back to YouTube, right? YouTube, YouTube is always YouTube. the final the, yes. the, the, the final spot. Because why... <laughs> Like it's like, man, I can make an extra meal just getting even better on YouTube versus what like you well, you can't make money like that on, on TikTok. Yeah. You can make TikTok 
you can make money using TikTok's audience again and monetize it, but I'm already doing that through YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly, bro. And like YouTube those, ain't about, I mean, TikTok ain't about to drop the bag like that. Bro, those streams that you get paid on um, Facebook and Instagram, like that payment, what have you gotten paid so far? Because I still never turned my stuff on. Max, at this point, maybe like $900, $1,000, something like that. For a total of, I'm probably sitting on my Instagram, maybe... Close to like 400,000 views, maybe between 200,000, 400,000, somewhere there. But I haven't got paid more, like, uh, usually not more than a band from it. It's not, it's not the worst. And the max is $1,200 a month for 1.2 million views. So, mm. 1.2 million views a month, you can pay up to $1,200 on Instagram. 1.2 million views a month on YouTube, will, <sighs> will, I would think, would at least be like, Probably at least like three to five bands minimum. If your your uh, what's the, the the your cost per whatever is is pretty low. Oh yeah, they're like you talking about the cost per uh like video or cost per impressions. Yeah, like the shit that changes when they. Are you talking about the revenue per per impressions? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because I know that fluctuates and they can they can change how much you get paid, but yes, because also you know it depends on your category. Yeah. So there's different types of ads ran on different type of people. Yeah. And, you know, so the money's a little bit different as well. But I can even say, yeah, in the music space, probably, let me see. That's closer to five bands. That's all I was saying, yeah. Yeah, five bands at least. At least. Well, 1,200 <laughs> on Instagram, on YouTube. I mean, on TikTok, it's probably like $40. <laughs> hey. Hey, <laughs> so that's just that's just a small, that's a, that's a small um, example, right? And then we know that some of these people who are doing, you know, five million, ten million, thirty Crazy. million, a hundred million every single month, Crazy right? Million. Getting thirty bands off of a single video, right? Yeah. So uh, YouTube is the best; it's the only place that you're getting paid to advertise yourself, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's the way I see it. Yeah. So like, oh man, it's one thing to run an ad. And then you have your cost per acquisition, which means, oh, it took cost me five dollars to acquire this customer to sell this twenty dollar product. I made fifteen dollars. YouTube, you might make five dollars posting content to sell this twenty dollar product. So now you got twenty five dollars instead mm-hmm. of fifteen, and yeah. you add that up, right? You know, twenty five times ten, that's two hundred and fifty. Fifteen times ten, that's one hundred and fifty. Yeah. So all it takes is ten customers to already have a hundred dollar difference. Yeah. Multiply that by another ten, and that by another ten, it grows. So you're getting paid to acquire your customers. It's nothing like that, and that's why YouTube. There's going to be another level of focus and attention that continues to go to it. And I know the burn is a little bit slower, but once it happens for y'all artists, like trust me. It's it is so worth it. It's why these dudes just keep doing covers and stuff like, yeah. <laughs> like that. Like Spotify don't pay me for covers like I can get just paid for on YouTube. Like I don't even think you can be a be paid for covers on um no, you can't be paid for covers on Spotify, right? Yeah, it's like you can't certain, be paid for uh remixes and samples. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. I know yeah, I know yeah, what yeah. the covers like certain paperwork you can fill out. Right, right, yeah, right, right. Distributor to get it on there. Yeah, I think you get paid a little less. I can't remember what that is. So I have to ask Amir. Because I remember he, we talked about that last. But with that being said, appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you want to be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.